Hi, this is Matt from AppWorks, and we're continuing with our video series on the new features in BioMaker Pro 19.1 that allow JavaScript um, add-ons to be added to your database. Today's add-on we're going to look at is the timer. This is really an interesting one. So first of all, I'm going to start from the scratch here, start from the beginning. I'm just going to say create. I'm going to make a database called demo of the timer of timer. Make it on the desktop. And as we've seen with a lot of these other ones, the first thing I'll do is go to layout mode and go to the add-ons tab and click plus on the bottom left and then choose timer. That's the bottom right one on the chart on the list. Then, um, as before, I'm going to um, drag it to the layout, but I'm going to actually add it to the sample data that comes with this one, because this one is pretty interesting. So um, notice that I've got some fields off the screen here, uh, and I've got an, some area down here where I'm going to drag my timer widget so that it comes into the file. These are interesting, so I'm going to add them to my layout. And before we actually turn the timer on, we'll take a look at the data. So as with all the other add-ons, um, the, the function is actually a web viewer with the allow JavaScript feature turned on, which allows me to click buttons inside of the JavaScript, um, inside of the web viewer, and have it run scripts in FileMaker. So this add-on that A brings in, brings in sample data. So it brings in um, two tables, my sample data and my timer function. Brings in a custom function and brings in a folder full of scripts and a couple of layouts. And we can take a look at that later. But notice what's happening here is each of these sample records has a primary key and a name. And they come in with some time already logged. So they already have stuff going. Uh, at, at the moment, none of the timers is started, though. So if we go to the gym record and click Start, um, then what happens is the timer is now starting to count up. This is where it gets really interesting. I'm going to close this file and then reopen the file. And when I go back to that record, it knows his timer is still running. And it's counted the time even after the thing is closed, which is pretty sweet, <laughs> I think. Um, so it's actually tracking some other, um, other information uh, and reinitializing it when the record loads. So if I click on stop, what's going to happen is it's going to clear out this time last started. And unfortunately, this data is showing in scientific notation. But I believe this is time in very, very small increments, like microseconds, something like that. Um, we're going to explore that in, in a second as well. So I'm going to uh, format this data as entered. And that way, I can see kind of it's a very, very large number. So if I click stop, it will clear that and then add up to my total time. So two minutes, 34 seconds. I'm going to start this again. And I want to turn debugger on because I want to do a little playing around here. I'm going to click on stop and see exactly what happens um, with what it does. So we've seen, we've seen these scripts running in some of our other videos. But what's happening is it sets a bunch of uh, features. It grabs some JSON from the button that I'm clicking. So if I go to Data Viewer and take a look at the raw JSON, this will show me exactly what gets sent to the button that I'm, that I'm running, which is quite a bit. Um, I might want to actually use another uh, function, which is a really useful one. I'm going to use JSON format elements and clean my JSON. Um, and that allows me to read it in a little bit easier way. This is, uh, I always try to throw in little tips with these videos. And JSON format elements is one of my favorite ones. So, time logged in field. These are the three fields that I've configured. We didn't really look at my preferences yet, but those automatically came along with um, how it's configured. Um, it's uh, background, so we've got um, color values and things that are, that are in the preferences. And then we've also got our time logged field. Um, so that's kind of con uh, configuration changes. And then what action am I sending? Am I sending um, uh, my primer? Actually, these are just more, uh, yeah, here we go, event type is stop. So this is saying stop the timer. So if I, if I run this again and click start, um, well, I didn't have debugger open that time. Oh, wait, no, debugger is still running here. I think I've paused it. Let me stop my timer, go back to debugger, and start it. When I take a look at my JSON here, the one change that I'll see at the bottom, 
Uh, I guess I lost my saved. Where are my elements? Now the action I see is start. So the event type is start. Let that continue to run. So this just sets that information and it keeps it independent for each person. So I can actually have timers running for three different people here. This person doesn't even have a name yet. Um, so uh, again, when I close the file and reopen it, um, those three timers are gonna independently be running. So it remembers the state of each of those records. So my first record gym is still running. I'll go ahead and stop that one and it will add up yeah, his time. So I talked about um, the configuration. Let's take a look at that one for this particular add-on. So the gear has, um, oh, it actually, uh, it was working despite my sample data not showing up here, but I'm just gonna um, reset all this. So I'm gonna say my layout is my timer sample data <clears throat> and my logging fields are the time logged, the total time, and the last started. Then I'll save that. Uh, and then uh, I also noticed that I have some settings here for color. So if I go to settings, I can choose different colors. Um, I don't really know a lot of hex colors by heart, but you can get those codes pretty easily in FileMaker. Um, you know what, since I brought it up, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. So if you go to layout mode and you click on any object, um, you can go to the tag here and click on a color. And then the color of what you choose is right here. So if I click on like this red, oh, that's awful. Um, it tells me that red color is D90B00. Um, my favorite color is um, this safety yellow color. One of the safety yellows uh, has a really fun hex code. I think it's one of them is FFF000. I can't remember which one that is, but it's funny. That one right there. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a really hideous color. I can't let that stay even for a minute, so I'll just undo a bunch of times. There we go, back to white. So in this add-on, you get a lot of choices for configuring it for your data. Um, some simple changes for color and uh, a pretty interesting way to track multiple different timers for different records and have a really clean uh, way to just to demonstrate it and show that time counter continuing to run as your record goes. This actually, I should probably have started with, it's very difficult in FileMaker to just have a little running counter in a corner. So that feature all by itself is actually a pretty useful thing and it's something that's fairly difficult to do in FileMaker without this really, really simple add-on. Thanks very much for your time and have a lovely day.